Welcome, I'm Bella May. In today's video, we're gonna take a tour of my sewing studio. So this past year, the end of 2019, I finally got some furniture and tools that I wanted to get in here in the studio for quite some time. And it's finally here and it's appropriate that it's a new year and I wanted to take you guys along to explore these wonderful things that I am so blessed to have. Before we get started, I wanted to explain a little bit about my situation here in the studio. I am really blessed to be able to work in such a huge, wonderful room. This is my parents' house and they built this addition to double as a guest room, but also my sewing room. So there is a hideaway bed in a cabinet behind the camera. So that folds down and that's how it turns into a guest room. And in the meantime, when there's no guest visiting, it's my sewing room. So, I am so, so, I enjoy it very much. If I had to pay or rent for a studio this size and this nice, I would not be able to do it. It would be much different, much like how I first started out in a corner of a room sewing my dresses. So I came into the studio in the summer of 2017. I attended Costume College in LA, and during that time, it was receiving its final touches. And so when I got back, I was able to move in with all my sewing supplies, which I have a lot of. And over the past two and a half years, I've slowly collected the various furniture and tools that you see here today. It was not one massive expense at one time, it was split up in those many months. And for the longest time, I wanted to have a cutting table to add to the sewing room that would finalize everything. And over Thanksgiving this past year, my wonderful brothers built me the cutting table and that was the icing on top of the cake. So yes, this is the cutting table I am talking about. It is massive and so nice. I mean, I have dreamt about having a cutting table like this for so very long and it's finally right here before my eyes and I can use it and have been using it and really enjoying it. There is a little practicality to it and there's a seam right here which folds down that section and it gets a smaller but still huge cutting table that I can use and also makes it a little more practical to move against a wall when it's time to become a guest room. As I was saying, my brothers built this for me over Thanksgiving, and then it was mainly done by the time that they left and went back to their homes. But it was kind of up to me and one of my brothers, who's still at home, to finish it up and give the finishing touches. But that took me quite a few weeks to finally get around to it. But come Christmas time, I had finished staining and waxing the top, and it was time to get those finishing touches to actually get it finished and brought in here. And my brother who's at home and my dad helped me do that and we got it in before Christmas, but it wasn't until the new year that I finally started sewing on it. And it was, it's so nice. I know, I'm probably making you jealous, but a little backstory, I did for many, many years since I started this business, I worked on anything I could. I mean, mainly that was on the floor. Sometimes it was the kitchen table. It was just anywhere I had room. Often it was on a carpeted floor, which let me tell you, pinning on carpet, trying to pin a pattern piece on carpet with fabric laid out, it's not really a great mixture, but that is what I did for the longest time. And to now have a cutting table is just, really nice. And so you will be seeing this in pretty much all of my videos because it's kind of my tabletop that I sit behind or stand behind to show you all the different things you need or the sewing background, really just everything. And now let's explore the bottom section of this cutting table because it's not just the top that gets used. Let's sit on the floor and let's explore what's down here. So first of all, I have three wonderful cabinets where I can store all sorts of goodies. Over here, I've got my paper and stationery type supplies for my business. I've got some files, and then I also have some of my patterns stored here. So that's kind of the boring cabinet. Over here, I've got some of my 
notions and goodies stored in some random glass jars, mainly from candles and such. And then down here, this is a pencil or pen holder that, well, it's supposed to be used on a desk, but I use it for my sewing accessories. And these are my very nice fabric scissors. Since I usually cut things out on the cutting table, I just store them down here so that I can easily get to them. So this is a drawer set that was taken off some antique sewing machines. And I got this at a vintage fair and I thought it was so nice. It's in wonderful condition. And there's even a wood design along here that adds an extra touch to its vintage-ness. And here I have some cutting supplies, such as my rotary cutter. This drawer, I keep my pins and needles. And in this drawer, I have just random things. I've, we've all gotta have one of those random drawers, don't we? And then, you might have seen this too. This is the 1909 pin case that Karolina Zembroska got for me during the Secret Santa gift exchange among the costumers. If you want to know more about that, I've linked to the video in the description so you can see what I'm referring to. And then over here in this drawer, I have more sewing notions and supplies. I've got my twill tape, which I have a lot of. I've got some miscellaneous sewing tools. And then here, they're very plainly marked in this lovely blush pink lidded tote. Totes make me really happy. Now that you've seen this side of the cutting table, let's move on to the other side. And this is the other side. Well, actually, one of two other sides. Because the reason I say that is these three sections go all the way through to the other side. And that's really nice because I can put a full bolt all the way through and I can store it down here. Yay! This is why custom designing a cutting table is extremely helpful and also not paying the price for custom designing it. I'm a little bit blown away that I have such talented brothers who can do this for me. That is a feature I'm really happy about. It's just, it makes me happy. The plan for this space is to store my in-process costumes. So what I mean is, if it's a project that I'm working on, I'm gonna just keep the supplies out here so I don't have to go into the closet every time I want to work on it. So here I just have a basket of my supplies for the Phantom of the Opera dress and I'm so excited to put it all together. And then here is another section that I'm really happy about. It's a nice, tall, skinny section. I can fit long, skinny things, such as my cutting mat for my rotary cutter. And then also, I just made this. This is my ironing board, and it's very long. I'll pull it out later. It's gonna be so nice for ironing those huge pieces of fabric that take forever on a regular sized ironing board, I thought it was finally time to make one of these and I just got around to it. So now it can get stored down here and when I need it, I'll pop it up on here. And another thing, I attached some nails and now I have a nice space to hang my rulers. And they look kind of nice there. And then back here, this is the section that folds down. And you probably are seeing this. In it isn't stained right here. I thought it was gonna be hidden and not visible, so I will be staining that because I do notice it and other people notice it. So I'll be staining that, but it's good for now. Let's move on to my office space. Welcome to my office. Won't you have a seat? No, for real. This is my little office corner, AKA a desk and a chair. This is where I usually start my day with my planner and just planning out the things that I need to get done for that day. And then also, I usually end up doing all my video editing and blogging and things like that, sitting here with this wonderful view. Basically, it's a desk with stationery and pens and probably a lot more pens than is needed, but I have a lot of pens. And yes, it does say garden down there. I have not yet come around to painting that and 
maybe writing something on it for right now. It just says garden and I'm okay with that. And up here, I have another set of vintage drawers from a sewing machine that I got at a vintage fair. And I have a lot of post-it notes and sticky notes in there and to-do lists because organizing things. And then even more post-its and sticky notes up here. And then I've got a bunch of files and folders over there, which they're pretty self-explanatory. And then you might have noticed this if you watch my bell video, it's a teacup and a candle. My mom makes these and she's given me some of them and I really like them. And also they make really good props in videos as I discovered when I was filming that bell video. So anyways, that's about it for my little office corner. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it does have a lovely view. I've got an office with a lovely view. And now let's move on to my little sewing section. I've just recently set this area up and the reason I just set it up is because I just finished this table. What I mean by finished is I did not make it and no, my brothers didn't make it. I got it from Ikea. And the one thing I had to do with it is it all came in this color. It's a natural wood with a very light finish. And when I purchased it, I thought I would be able to just stain the whole thing and it'd be super easy. But it turns out it did have a finish. And the reason I didn't think it had a finish is because I didn't read the description. My bad. But when I got it and realized I couldn't stain it, I was considering not doing anything with it, but then decided a darker top would look better. And so I ended up sanding it down and then staining and waxing it. Now, since I did have to sand it and I didn't think I had to, it kind of stayed out of the sewing room for a while until I finally made the time to go out there and do it. And so I just did that. I just got it finished up and all set up for my sewing time. And here is my trusty old Bernina. It is a Bernina Record 1930 Electric. There's the full name. And I got it on eBay. This is where my family have always purchased our sewing machines and the 930 or the 931 are the machines that we choose to purchase. They're old, they're from the 1980s and they are made out of basically all metal, barely any plastic. And when you're working with plastic, there's a more chance that there can break and break down a machine can be expensive. So these are made out of metal and they're very heavy, but also very sturdy. There's also no electrical side of it. And what I mean by electrical is, you know, the fancy screens where you can touch it and change the stitches and everything. That does tend to break down fairly easily, or at least the machines we've seen. And really in general, a machine that has more parts to it, more systems and such, it's gonna break down faster because there's more parts that can break. So with these machines, they're fairly basic, but they also last a very long time. So not on this particular machine, but the machine I had before, which it was a 931 instead of a 930, I sewed several Cinderella dresses with it. And when I'm saying a Cinderella dress, I'm saying 200, plus yards of fabric cut into frills, so even more than 200 yards, cut into frills and then ran through twice through here. One time to hem it and one time to ruffle it. So we're talking a lot of use for these and it held up for so long. It did finally give up and then I bought another one through eBay and it has worked wonderfully so far. And then here is a serger. This is my mom's serger actually, and it's a Husqvarna Viking Husky Lock 910 if you're interested. This was purchased secondhand and it does the trick. And then these nice drawers here carry all my sewing supplies. So bobbins, thread, feet, all that good stuff. So I'm glad to have that all stored. And then here 
is a unique little feature of my sewing room. I've had this for many years now, and it is meant to be a jewelry holder. Well, I guess technically a necklace holder, but I got it and I thought it was so cute and decided to hang my scissors on it. And really, it's worked great. I mean, it's never fallen over and stabbed anyone, so that's a good thing. It just adds a little accent to my sewing room, which is always nice when something can be both useful and pretty. I think I, I like doing that kind of thing. And if you have not used a magnet pin collector, it's not a cushion, so it can't be a magnet cushion. I don't know what it's called. Basically, it's a magnet that holds pins. It's so nice. I am never going back to a regular pin cushion. You wanna know why? It saves time because so you take off some pins from sewing, you can just throw them on and it collects it. You don't have to take the time to stab it into the cushion or anything like that. You can just literally, oops. Sometimes it does that if you throw too many at once. So if you do a couple and aim, it collects it. Anyways, just a little, it's made my life way easier when it comes to pins. And now, Let's move on to my ironing station. So first of all, this ironing station can be moved about to wherever I need it to go, but mainly it's gonna stay up here on the cutting table. The feed iron. So as you can see, it has a lot of cords, but this is where the magic happens. This is a tank of water up here. And so basically how to describe it is the water comes down into the iron and the iron turns it into steam basically instantly. There's no water sitting in the iron and there's no risk of leaking the water onto your fabric. You just get steam without the hassle of water. So yes, there's water because steam comes from water. So in the years that I've had this, I've never had water leakage onto my fabric. So I've never ruined a pattern piece or anything like that because water decided to leak out of my iron and ruin it, say it's silk or something. So I've never had a problem with this. I really, really like this. So it's a gravity feed iron and I've linked to it in the description below. But the interesting thing about it is you do have to have the water tank and cord up above your ironing surface because it does work on gravity. You have to have it up high. So a majority of people with gravity feed iron, at least what I've seen, have used IV poles to support their water tank. Now I think that was a great idea and I almost bought one, but then for some reason I procrastinated from buying it. I think part of it was because they were more expensive than I thought they would be and so I put off purchasing it, which I'm so glad I did, because I found this cart that is sturdy enough that I could attach this piece of wood to the cart and hang my water thing from it. And it's a nice little cart that can carry not only my iron, but all of my ironing tools. So let's set it up like the way I would usually have it. I'm just gonna place that over there for now and pull out from my section of my cutting table, ironing board that I just made and I have a video about it. But. I finally decided it was time to make an ironing board that wasn't the little ironing boards that you usually use. I was getting tired of a little small surface and I had seen this done before and I really wanted to do it and I finally got around to doing it. So again, the video is down below. I now have a wonderfully long 60 inch surface and then if I need to get the details and such, I can grab this. I call it my mini board, but it's technically a shoulder board. And then a seam roll and a tailor's ham. These three tools are so helpful for pressing matters. Let's set up my iron the way I would usually have it set up. And what this does, it just puts the cord and the water tank more directly over ahead of my ironing board. It's not really overhead, but it's definitely a little bit more over. I know quite a few people with lower ceilings have attached it like right above the ironing board and that really gives an optimal movement of the iron. But 
with this setup, I think it works fine. I can still go all the way over here. And if I need a little more room, I can just pull this like that. And now I can go all the way over here. Now that we've talked about my ironing station, let's move on to explore the closet where I store quite a lot of things. Welcome to the place that I store many things. So in this side of the closet, I store a lot of things for sewing that I don't use on a regular basis. And that is surprisingly quite a lot of things. With sewing, you tend to have supplies that you do need and use, but they're on kind of a rare basis and you need to store them somewhere. And I am fortunate enough to really have a wonderful space to store them. Again, I did not always have this much room and I am definitely using it like I have room because it's not all packed in deep and tight and everything because I don't have to at this time. So I am very happy to have it more organized and as you can see, my totes again. I decided pink and gray was a good combo for me. They're not too bright pink. I don't really like bright pink things. A blush pink is nice. And then I've got some nice totes. Again, I've recently bought a lot of organizing totes because it was time to do that. I had the money, I had the time, and I had the space. So it was time to invest a little money in totes and get everything organized well. And so as you can see, this is also where I store all my fabric. And I have too much of it. I know a seamstress can't have too much fabric, but I think I have too much fabric. I say that because a lot of this fabric I picked up years ago and I haven't done anything with it. When Hancock's Fabric was going out of business, if you don't know what Hancock's Fabric is, to describe it quickly, Hancock's Fabric was an incredible fabric store that pretty much had locations all over the place. They carried great quality fabric and a variety of options. But then they went out of business and I and my bright ideas decided I should buy a bunch of fabric off of them when they were like 90% off, which I think was a good idea. It's just a majority of them I have not used, such as all these cotton fabrics up here. Those have been sitting in my closet or anywhere they can find space for years and I have not sat down and made something with them. I do have ideas for some of them, but I just haven't found the time to make them. Maybe I should do that and just get them out of my closet and turn them into something. And then back here, so I discovered that this closet is the perfect width to hang my bolts of fabric like that. They go from one shelf to the other shelf over here. And by the way, that side of the closet doesn't hold any of my sewing supplies, but from one shelf to the other, it works for these bolts. So I have a very full wall of fabric bolts, plus those up there. These are really the higher quality fabrics that I have. I've got some silk down here. This silk, I got at Hancock's, I think 90% off or something, but it was $2 a yard for silk. And it is a unique fabric. I do want to make a bustle dress out of it because I think it would work for the era. It wouldn't be perfect, I don't think, as far as the texture that it has, but I still think it would look really neat. And then, you know, I just got some linens and such. I have a lot of fabric that I need to do something with, and you'll probably, hopefully, see some of this fabric turned into costumes or historical clothing in the near future, hopefully. And then here, these are all my fabric remnants. So I have them sorted by fiber and type. So up here, I have my sheer polyesters. So you know, chiffons. And then this one is lining fabric. And then this is just my other polyester fabric. And then down here, I have my draft fabric. This is just a collection of cotton muslins. And then I have canvas, duck. And then I have my other cottons. Basically in these tubs, they're my remnants that I, I call them remnants because they're either weird shapes or they have less than about two yards. I mean, I'm not specific about it, but basically they're just the smaller pieces of fabric. And then I also have a bin for silk and linens. And then over here are my larger pieces of fabric that wouldn't fit on a bolt, but are large enough to fold up on their own. So fairly basic, 
but I finally got them all organized like this and it makes me very happy to look in and know exactly what I have so I know if I need to purchase something or not. You were probably wondering, what are the trash bags? And you might have seen this, Bella Cinderella Frills, and that is what it is. And these totes are Cinderella supplies. This is accumulation of frills and extra supplies from making five Cinderella ball gowns. So a lot of miscellaneous pieces in there. I'll be using them in my sixth replica that will be coming this spring. And so I do have a lot of frills already made, which is going to help out a lot but it is a lot of random pieces and such that will take a little more time to put together. But I'll be very glad to have these bags out of my way and out of this closet. Of course, it's just gonna turn into a ball gown that also needs to get stored in the closet or somewhere, but it'll be a ball gown and not trash bags of frills. But anyways, that's what all this is. And now let me give you another view of the closet. Here's another view of this side of the closet. These boxes here are future projects that I'm currently collecting supplies for. And then I have a need to finish bin. This is just miscellaneous small projects that I really need to finish. Some of them are half finished or half done or half undone, whichever way you want to look at it. But that's just a tote I really need to get to. Here I've got some packing supplies. Up above there's some patterns and such. And then here are some of the completed projects that I currently own. I don't own a lot of completed projects because most of them were made for custom orders or I made them and then sold them later on to someone in my same size. I've got my Civil War era ball gown here, which I am a little bit fond of. It's not going to go anywhere. This is made for me and it shall be mine. It will be continue to be mine. Here, It would take me forever to show you everything that's stored in here. Oh, and then I also have all my shoes stored up top. I recently bought three pairs of American Duchess shoes and I'm so excited about these because they fit wonderfully and they're historically accurate and I'm so happy to make costumes for them. Yes, I'm getting the shoes and then making the outfit, but they were having a really good sale and I decided to stock up on it and they're my first pairs and I'm really pleased with them. I think that wraps up everything here in the closet. There's only one more space that I want to show you. And here we have it, a place that doesn't need much explaining. It's just a pretty couch and a pretty wall with my project board and another list of projects and a pretty picture and a nice quote. So really not a lot to explain, except for the fact that I need to use this in more videos. I hardly ever sit here. I often have things on it instead of having the space to sit down, but it would give a nice feel to a sewing video. So you might see it in the future. And there you have it, a little tour of Bella Mae's sewing studio.